What's up YouTube, this is Groudon Empire and I am back for another episode of my Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Ranked Single Series. The like goal for this video is 30 likes, so make sure to demolish that thumbs up like button down below. If the like goal is reached, I will continue to upload videos, so make sure to show your support for the channel. If you hit the like button but didn't reach the like goal, make sure to share this video with your friends and anyone you think might be interested so we can expand the empire and get more people to help reach that like goal. Also, the team that I will be using for this episode is on the left. Take a good look at the team and before we even find an opponent, Leave a comment down below with your vote for who you think will be the most valuable Pokemon, the MVP. After you're done watching the episode, go back and reply to that comment with another comment letting us know if you were right or wrong. Was your vote even selected? How did they do if they were picked? And who do you think deserves to be MVP if you change your mind? Please let me know down below in the comment section as I really really am interested and when I retire this team, I will choose the real MVP based on which Pokemon gets the most MVP votes and for the most number of episodes. I hope you guys enjoy the episode. We are coming in with a rating of 1756 and now we are looking for an opponent who will be our victim for this episode. I am eagerly awaiting them. They are not going to have a good time. They have a rating of 1671. We finally found an opponent and their rating is so much lower than ours. If we do not win, they are going to be the happiest people in the world because they're going to get like 1820 points and we are going to lose an equivalent amount. So. Yeah, take a screen cap of my opponent's team and we're just gonna we're just gonna look and start looking at seeing what what we might want to use on my team. So I look at their team and I'm just thinking Heracross. Like Heracross can destroy Donphan, it can destroy Scrafty, you know, Scrafty can't touch it even with Zen Headbow, which nobody really uses. And then of course you can one on one, you can 1v1 a Venusaur, so that's great. So Heracross is amazing for the entire right side. And I also have Earthquake for the Aegislash, and also if my Heracross, if that Rotom Heat does not have any speed investment, I can outspeed the Rotom Heat before Mega Evolving, and I can just Oko it with Rock Blast. And then of course, Pin Missile for Slowbro, and I'm pretty sure even Mega Slowbro. So seriously, Mega Heracross is a monster. But yeah, uh, big issues that I think would be... Aegislash, because I can't Oko Aegislash, and so I think I really need to have something that can switch into an Aegislash and then proceed to dis defeat it 1v1. And just like the last episode, or I, I think the last episode, Heat Ren will seriously come in handy for taking a Shadow Ball, and even better for Flash Cannons, and then it can just destroy that thing. And then also for Rotom Heat. Now for the last Pokemon, Originally, I would be thinking to use a Cresselia, or ordinarily I might say, but I'm going with Azumarill because Azumarill can take down the uh, Scrafty, Donphan, and especially Rotom Heat. You know, I can, I can go into Rotom Heat on an Overheat and I can just, de just destroy it with a uh, Waterfall or Waterfall plus Aqua Jet. And I have Assault Vest so I can take a Thunderbolt even if, yeah. So anyway, speaking of Rotom Heat, my opponent starts off with the Rotom Heat. I'm going to predict myself to be faster, and I'm going to Mega Evolve go for Rock Blast right away. And we'll see if my prediction is correct. If my prediction is wrong, and my opponent goes for an Overheat, I'm done. If my opponent doesn't go for the Overheat, and we, we see my opponent not going for the Overheat, and we are in great, great position. And we see that my opponent is faster, so that's either a Choice Scarf, or a just just a faster, just an invested uh, Rotom Heat. So I think it is actually a, uh, a choice. I don't know. I honestly don't know what kind of Rotom Heat that is. But I'm just glad I didn't go for Overheat. All right. Now we go for the Rock Blast, and we see that my opponent switched out into Aegislash, Slash, and it did a good amount of damage for a resisted move. That did a very nice amount of damage. All right, a very very nice. It's almost as if Aegislash doesn't even have that much defense. 
Now right away I'm going to go for Earthquake because my opponent probably does not expect me to carry the Earthquake. And uh, as I expected, they stayed in and they ate up the Earthquake. I was expecting Earthquake to KO, but it didn't KO, and look at how little my opponent survived by. That's really pretty darn depressing, but it's alright. We eat up the Shadow Ball. The Sp Death Drop does not matter because it's not like my opponent is faster. Unless they somehow got a speed tie, which I'm really doubting. But we see that my opponent has leftovers. So right now, I'm going to predict my opponent to go for a King's Shield. And I'm just going to go for an Earthquake, predicting my opponent to go for a King's Shield to heal up that HP while I don't have to risk, you know, potentially missing a Rock Blast versus a Switch in, other than, you know, Rotom Heat. Or, you know, I don't even have any contact moves. But still, you know, Earthquake, I don't want my opponent to get an idea of what I'm trying to do, predicting a switch or anything. So I'm just going to go for Earthquake. So he thinks I'm going to go for Earthquake next turn, and this turn I'm going to go for Rock Blast, because my opponent is probably going to predict me to go for another Earthquake, and probably either go out into Rotom Heat, or go out into any other Pokemon he might have, and what does he have on his team. Or he might just sack off his Aegislash. I'm not really sure, but I think, I'm pretty sure Rock Blast KOs from this range, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, so Rock Blast... I think Rock Blast is my best move even though he has a Dawn Fan and other stuff in the back because if he goes out into Rotom Heat, I would have KO'd the Rotom Heat and we see that my opponent brings in a Slow Bro. So it, it still takes a decent amount of damage and I can just KO it next turn with either a Bullet Seed or a Pin Missile and depending on how much damage it does, I can just go for another Rock Blast because he might hit the switch out and we get a critical hit and that does half so another Rock Blast will not KO this thing but my opponent might switch out to get the Regenerator healing and then also he's going to switch out into Rotom Heat predicting a Bullet Seed or a Pin Missile which Rotom Heat resists. So my opponent did make that play and we just predicted my opponent to make that play and we land the Rock Blast so our prediction was not in vain and you know what happens? <laughs> After that we, we just saw it happens. What happened? We just got, yo, we just got crit Rock Blast versus a Rotom Heat. Now, even if it wasn't a crit, it would obviously get KO'd. And it's not Citrus Berry, definitely a Scarf variant. That's what I'm assuming. Either that or Speed Invested Choice Specs. And we just destroyed that Rotom Heat. And every... Ugh, my, opponent's my opponent is done. <laughs> my opponent's gone. They can forfeit if they want, or they can just continue to play. But I, I win at this point. And I was just looking at my team and being like, hmm, should I, what should I do? I don't want to risk dying to a Shadow Sneak, but, you know, at the end, I decided to just go for the Earthquake because I pretty much win. And as you guys see, my opponent does forfeit. So that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Do not forget to leave your MVP thoughts in the comment section down below. I really want to know them, so please let me know. This was Groudon Empire. Peace out.